the best full moons of the year. It's lucky, optimistic, and it's delivering good news. We all need a bit of good news at this point in the year. So if things have been a bit depressing and gloomy, this full moon is the light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to give us hope for a brighter future. This is a powerful manifesting full moon. And this is because we have a couple of really positive aspects where Venus and Jupiter exactly conjunct at 28 degrees of Taurus. These are the benefics of the Zodiac. Venus is the lesser benefic, Jupiter is the greater benefic, and Jupiter is the ruler of this lunation. So this lunation is packed with bountiful blessings. The full moon in Sagittarius is happening on May the 23rd at 9.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you're checking for your own location in order to get the correct ascendant. This lunation is happening at 2 degrees 55 minutes of Sagittarius. So I'll check to see where that falls in your chart. This is the highlighted degree. Hello YouTube, my name is Rachel Mayo, your personal astrologer. Welcome to my channel. I would like to say a big welcome to all my new subscribers. If you're new to my channel and you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. It's absolutely free. It will not cost you anything. I'd also like to say thank you to all the people that comment on my videos. The commenting is really helpful with the YouTube algorithm. So please leave me a comment. Tell me where you're tuning in from. Tell me how you think this transit is going to affect you personally. Recording these videos and editing them takes a lot of time. I do this all by myself. Thank you to all the people that leave the timestamps in the comments. I'm still running the contest for a free solar return chart reading. And all you have to do to get into the contest is say free solar and subscribed in the comment section of this video. Even if you commented on my last video, I encourage you to comment on this video as well. I'm adding an extra winner. So that means three people will have a chance to win a free solar return chart reading with me. You can comment as many times as you want. So make sure that your subscription is open and visible so that I may select you. I'm going to select the winners at the new moon video next month. If you like the content of this video, please hit like, share and subscribe. All these actions are really appreciated. They encourage me to produce more free content. I'm going to be discussing how the Sagittarius new moon is going to affect you according to your ascendant. I also tell you about what your ruling planet is doing at the time of the lunation. This is really important because your ruling planet is the planet that is representing you. It doesn't matter what else is happening at the time of the lunar event. If your ruling planet is aspecting the event, then you're going to be highly affected. There is no mundane astrology in my discussions. My channel focuses on personal astrology. So that means that I focus more on you, my client, my subscribers, my viewers, and, and how these trends are going to affect you personally. I'm going to encourage you to listen to the whole introduction of this video. I highlight that most important aspect of the event in the introduction area of the video. So if you're skipping this part of the video, you will not be able to see how these transits are going to affect you personally. I also discuss important dates of other transits that are happening leading towards the lunation. And those other transits could be affecting you a lot more than even the lunation. And whenever I give any personal examples, I give those examples in the introduction part of a video. I'm not going to repeat all this information for every ascendant. So if you'd like to hear my personal experiences and stories from my other clients, of course with consent, pay attention to the information in the introduction. I'm a Western tropical astrologer, so that means I use whole sign system. But when I do readings for my clients, I use the Placidus system because I find that to be much more exact. So for you to refer to your whole sign ascendant, and if you use the Placidus system, pay attention to the degrees because you may have to listen to two signs. The energy at any full moon is heightened. This is going to be expanded because Jupiter expands whatever it touches. So expect big emotional endings and culminations. And some of these endings could actually be really positive. However, there's a caveat to this full moon. And that is because the anorectic degree of Taurus comes with some warnings. There's some really nasty fixed stars at this degree. We will address this a little bit later. In the meantime, let us bask in the glory and the bountiful the bountiful and positive aspects of this full moon. Let us remain optimistic for a while. Some of you may receive some good news. Others will see culmination of past efforts. And this is because Mercury, the messenger, is currently traveling alongside Jupiter. They're not exactly conjunct at this full moon. However, 
they are going to meet up at the Venus Gemini star point this is another special magical event a life-changing transit to look forward to Mercury the messenger is traveling alongside Jupiter the Lord of abundance a lot of good things the Santa Claus of the zodiac so when these two conjunct when and so when these two meet up and conjunct exactly around June 4th some of us are going to get some really good news Others are going to be hearing news about positive culminations of things they've been working on for a very long time. This is a fantastic transit. I'm really looking forward to it. So the good news or culminations could be about something that you initiated six months ago at the new moon in Sagittarius. You're going to start feeling more optimistic about the future, much more adventurous, wanting to travel and see foreign lands. Most of us are going to want to go on an adventure, a vacation travel abroad or just let loose and have some fun a definition of a full moon is an opposition between the sun and the moon so the moon is in sagittarius at 255 degrees and the sun is in gemini the opposite sign at the same degree that is the definition of a full moon jupiter the ruler of this lunation is not aspecting his own lunation so for some people that might feel like the justice system is looking away as with jupiter looking away and not aspecting his own lunation this means that some of you could possibly get a favorable a favorable judgment with lawsuits with lawsuits that have been going on for a while lawsuits that have really deep roots there could be a surprising positive judicial ruling and this could be because of divine intervention intervention after all this is a full moon it will bring culminations and endings and of course this all depends on how this lunation is affecting you according to your own natal birth chart and if you'd like to know i suggest you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com i always offer discounted readings for full moons new moons and solar events guess what i'm trying to say here about jupiter is the fact that jupiter is still kazimi the sun Jupiter was just burnt up in the rays of the sun on the 18th of May. So he has no power. This could essentially mean that the justice system is asleep and some people will get away with certain things. And some people getting away with certain things might mean that it was divine inter intervention on their part. So see it whichever way you may, but with the justice system asleep, some people will get favorable judgments or get away with things that they would have not been able to if Jupiter was visible in the sky. The judicial system is looking away and you're being judged by a higher system or a higher power, perhaps a guardian angel intervenes on your behalf or, or for some it could be karmic justice. So what does Jupiter rule in our zodiac? Jupiter rules two houses in your chart. He rules the sign of Sagittarius, which is going to be our focus in this discussion because the full moon is happening in Sagittarius after all. And he also rules the sign of Pisces, the natural 12th house of the zodiac. The ninth house rules over our higher belief system, the justice system, higher education. It rules over priests, gurus, professors. It rules anybody who may have inspired your future or or instill the higher belief system in you. So this is a higher belief system that was passed down to you. It's not, it's not your own higher belief system. Jupiter also rules over judges. Jupiter rules over foreign lands, foreign languages, and foreign people. So we're going to be seeing combinations that involve these type of subjects. Another interesting thing I noticed looking at these charts is that when Jupiter ingresses into the sign of Gemini, just just two days after this lunation, Mercury, the ruler of Mercury, the ruler of Gemini, is also not present because he's still transiting the sign of Taurus. So Mercury is also not present in his own sign when Jupiter enters there. Jupiter is not present at his own lunation. So there's something really special or behind the scenes going on with these two planets. So Jupiter will be allowed to do as he pleases when when he enters the sign of Gemini because Mercury is not present. It's like your friend giving you the keys to his house to do as you please for about two weeks while the owner of the house is away. Mikasa Sukasa. So if you've not watched my previous video on Jupiter entering Gemini, I suggest that you go and watch that video because these two events, because the full moon and the ingress of Jupiter into Gemini are happening just two days apart. They are connected. There's a lot more information that you can get to connect things in your own natal birth chart. So listen to that video. So we'll only have the sun, Venus and Jupiter at the time of the ingress. So these three are going to be throwing a big party 
So the justice system looking away at the time of this lunation could work out in favor for some people because Jupiter is apparently going to be busy partying with the Sun, Venus, and also getting positive vibes from Neptune who co-rules the sign of Pisces. Another aspect that is really positive is the fact that Neptune transiting at the end degrees uh, is the fact that Neptune transiting the end degrees of his own sign Pisces is trining Jupiter and Venus. I just realized that I kept saying Jupiter and Neptune will trine. They will not be trining. It's a sextile aspect. Sextile aspect is between two different elements, water and earth in this instance. So what I said can happen. However, with the sextile aspect, you have to apply effort. You have to take advantage of opportunities. So yes, if you are single, you should be out there looking for, you should be looking for your soulmate. So you just can't sit at home and expect this energy to bring this person to you. You have to go out there. With the trine, it's very possible that somebody just knocks on your door or just comes up to you and they end up, and they end up being a long-term partner. So go out there if you're interested in meeting someone. The Jupiter and Neptune trine is fantastic. This aspect could make your dreams come true. Neptune is the high octave of Venus. As you can see, there's a mutual reception going on here with Jupiter and Venus. As you can see, there's a mutual reception going on here. Venus is transiting her own sign in Taurus and hosting Jupiter. Venus is exalted in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. So there is some type of cooperation or negotiation that is possible at the time of this event, at the time of this lunation. Venus signifies the wife in a man's chart. Jupiter signifies the husband in a woman's chart. I really believe that this Jupiter-Venus conjunction plus the trine from Neptune is a window for soulmates to come through. So if you're single, you should be out there mingling and dating. Your husband or wife is looking for you. This is a very rare transit. The outer planets take years to aspect each other in this harmonious way. This, this aspect is a great aspect to get married under. The wedding will be luxurious and extravagant with a touch of fantasy, creativity, and imagination because of Neptune. This is also fantastic energy for existing relationships. So go ahead and do something special with your significant other. Go on a date, go on a vacation. It's going to be absolutely magical. You'll revive your relationship and possibly fall in and possibly fall in love with each other all over again. This is really romantic and lucky energy. So when we take a closer look at the planets, we're going to see that Neptune is dominant transiting in his own Neptune is dominant transiting in his own sign of Pisces. Venus is also dominant transiting in her own sign of Taurus. And remember, she's the ruler of the transiting south node. We also have Mars, who's not aspecting this lunation by degree. He's trining the Sagittarius house. Mars is the ruler of the transiting north node, and he's dominant in his own sign of Aries. Mars just recently conjuncted the North Node and brought up and possibly brought up a lot of action, perhaps aggression, and brought up a lot of action with that conjunction. Mars is going to later on conjunct his own eclipse and reactivate the Aries total solar eclipse. So there's a lot of karmic energy going on here. Another thing that makes this full moon exceptional, transiting Pluto, who's in the sign of Aquarius at around close to Close to two degrees of Aquarius is transiting retrograde and aspecting the sun and the moon. He's aspecting this lunation with a positive trine and sextile to the luminaries. Pluto is a planet of power and transformation. This aspect is allowing us to make positive transformations in these two houses. This is really powerful. This lunation is going to have exciting breakthroughs and unexpected blessings. So the negative part of the Venus-Jupiter conjunction at 28 degrees of Taurus is the fact that it's conjunct two negative fixed stars. Two negative fixed stars called the Pleiades and Algol, located at 29 degrees of Taurus. The fixed star called the Pleiades, the seven weeping sisters, at 29 degrees of Taurus is really negative because it signifies death, tragedy, loss, grief, disgrace. So some of us are going to be experiencing these emotions. The fixed star Algo is also around the same degree. Algo is a malefic star located in Medusa's head. Algo is also connected to alcohol. This star has been connected to beheadings, losing your head, alcoholism. It's a violent star. And I'm letting you know this because everybody is just hyping up the Jupiter-Venus conjunction as the best aspect and it's all going to be pleasant and lovely. 
not for everybody we have to keep in mind that these malefic stars are also located where this conjunction is happening however there is a hidden blessing here simply because venus is dominant in her own venus is dominant in her own sign so she's going to protect her house she's not going to let anything she's not going to let anything really negative happen in her house and jupiter is also there jupiter brings blessings protection and abundance so he's also going to be protecting this house the two benefics of the zodiac venus and jupiter are conjunct these malefic stars so if something really terrible happens it's because something else is aspect it's because something else in your chart is also aspecting this particular conjunction in a with a negative challenging aspect so i'm going to give you an example about what could possibly happen so perhaps you're celebrating a special breakthrough you're drinking you're drugging you're having fun or it could be that you won the lottery you're feeling really happy you're feeling really happy and you're out there partying and this could be because remember venus is bringing the goodies and jupiter is expanding regardless of the fact that venus and jupiter are conjunct these malefic fixed stars it it could be that something really positive happens in your life perhaps you win the lottery your partner proposed you're engaged you're celebrating the goodies that venus brought and jupiter is going to expand this happiness you could be drinking doing drugs just partying your head off neptune is giving it a dreamy magical touch you're imagining your future how your life is going to change with all these winnings or with the possibility of getting married your dreams have come true jupiter is the gas giant he's the santa claus of the zodiac he could definitely make your dreams come true and expand your happiness to the point where you're drinking too much you're partying too much you're drugging too much you don't know your limits because everything is expanded and we all know that overdoing it with these things could lead to overdoses alcohol poisoning and possibly accidents so please don't overdo anything and watch out for other people who are overdoing it and over partying because the end result is not going to be good not with these unlucky fixed stars being activated so please be safe i'm very familiar with these unlucky fixed stars my descendant is exactly conjunct these unlucky fixed stars and if you've watched my past videos you know that my husband died in a car accident this is one of the things that can happen if you have your descendant conjunct these malefic fixed stars. Of course, it's not everybody that's going to have that happen. The Weeping Sisters will bring something for you to cry about at some point in your life. You also have to have other indicators in your chart for this to be for, for this to be the thing that will happen to you so don't get discouraged. It doesn't happen to everyone. For other people, if you have Algo conjunct your ascendant. You could have problems with alcoholism or some type of disgrace at some point in your life. And if you have Algo or the Weeping Sisters conjunct your MC, whatever tragedy you face or disgrace is going to be a very public one. It's going to be known by the public. And if it's conjunct the IC, it could be something to do with your ancestry, your mother, your family that is going to bring some type of sadness, weeping or disgrace. Or you could be exiled from your own homeland. And as I said, you have to have some other indicator in your chart for it to happen, for it to transpire that way. It's not going to happen exactly that way for everybody. And I keep a tight orb of about two degrees. So you feel it more if it's much more exact as it was in my situation. Like I said earlier, I think there's some level of protection because the two benefics, Venus and Jupiter, are the ones who are activating these malefic fixed stars. And also this is Venus's house. Whatever happens as a result of this conjunction, if it's negative, there will be some help there for you. There will be some help there for you, especially because Neptune is also trining this conjunction. And Neptune is going to bring empathy, compassion, and perhaps healing to whatever event occurs. So have faith that everything will work out in the end. So in order for you to know how this aspect is really going to work out for you, I suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayor.com. Sagittarius is the natural ruler of the ninth house. This is the house of our future. It is the house of luck, faith, and optimism. The activation of these two houses will lead some of us to want to go on adventure, see foreign lands, and have different experiences. We're going to let loose, have fun, and just enjoy life. So who's going to be affected the most by this lunation? Everyone, because there are too many planets that are being activated at the time of this lunation. The, the people who are going to have the best experience with this full moon in Sagittarius are the fire signs. 
the fire signs are Aries Leo and Sagittarius Sagittarius you're going to be affected the most simply because it's happening in your sign the other two signs are going to have a harmonious trine aspect to their houses or their placements in the fire signs this is the best aspect in astrology because it makes things happen easily things just fall into things will just fall into place for you if you were born on or around the 23rd of may a few days before a few days before a few days after you're in luck because you're going to have this amazing energy in your solar return chart this is going to be an exciting year filled with culminations and endings and we all know when this end and when we all know when things end there has to be a new beginning so you're going to have both in your solar return chart this is an this is an excellent solar return year to get a solar return chart reading this year will be a year to remember you'll want to know which house this energy is going to fall in it's going to fall in in your solar return chart so book a reading with me if you can't afford a reading with me at this time enter the contest subscribe to my channel enter the contest by saying free solar and subscribed in the comment section of this video you just never know Jupiter might bless you the air signs are also going to have a better experience with this lunation the air signs are Gemini Libra and Aquarius however Gemini is going to have the opposition aspect this means that other people are going to oppose you and you may have to meet them halfway in order to make things happen for you the other two signs Libra and Aquarius are going to have a sextile aspect a sextile aspect is a harmonious aspect that brings opportunities your way the sextile aspect is an aspect of effort you have to make an effort to take advantage of the opportunities otherwise this energy is just going to dissipate so use it or lose it the earth signs and the water signs are not directly aspecting this lunation however they are being aspected by the Venus Jupiter conjunction by a harmonious trine and sextile aspect so even though they're excluded so even though they're kind of excluded from this lunation they're benefit they're benefiting the most from this conjunction so if you have any planets at 29 degrees of the water signs the earth signs you're really going to benefit from the Venus Jupiter conjunction Please share my video on your social media platform. It really helps my channel grow and is highly appreciated. So you're going to want to listen to your ascendant because your ascendant rules you. It rules your body. It rules what's going to happen to you personally. This is what's going to be much more accurate. And then listen to your sun sign because this is going to tell you about how others see you, your identity, your soul. And listen to your moon sign because this is going to tell you how you're going to feel uh, how you're going to feel emotionally as a result of this as a result of this lunation I would also encourage you to listen to the Taurus house and this and this is where the other sweet spot is happening it's going to be trining your earth signs and it's going to be sextiling you and it's going to be sextiling your water sign so this lunation has some really sweet spots and some challenges in order to benefit from this discussion I'm going to encourage you to listen to the whole introduction of this video some of the sweet spots in your chart are going to come as a result of what's going on in your Taurus house affecting your other affecting your other earth signs and your water signs because there's going to be a trine and a sextile aspect to this sweet spot Aries ascendant Sun or moon this lunation is happening in your ninth house this is where you're going to have culminations and endings and perhaps a new beginning because whenever we end something something new has to start as I always tell you Aries you always have to listen to the introduction of any video that I do and this is because you are the sign that sets the order of the houses in the zodiac the whole introduction in any video is always going to apply to you the ninth house is the ruler of the justice system it rules over universities foreign lands and our higher belief system so perhaps some of you are going to have a culmination in a foreign country if you've lived if you've been living in a foreign country this is going to be the end of your stay this is going to be the, this is going to be the end of your stay there you're going to come back home and for some of you who have been living illegally in a foreign country this could be the end of your illegal status in a foreign country in that you receive your green card or your you, re, you received your green card or your citizenship Aries is a fire sign this means that you're going to have a positive experience with this lunation simply because your Aries placements are going to try and sextile this lunation you're going to receive opportunities to make things happen in a positive way and some other things are just going to happen naturally for you as a result of the trine aspect this is a fantastic lunation for you Aries 
Some of you could be completing your studies at university. You could, be, you could be graduating from college. You could be graduating from university at this time. Or, or you could also be graduating from high school. Some of you will be leaving behind an old belief system and adopting a new higher belief system. You, cannot, you can no longer keep your old belief system. It's not your belief system. It's something that was passed down to you. Perhaps you have matured and you've come into your own higher belief system. And this could be a belief system about religion, uh, about life philosophy the justice the justice system this just all depends on what's going on in your own natal birth chart and to find out how it's going to affect you personally i suggest you book a reading with me at rachel-mayor.com the ninth house is where we make things official this is where we legalize things some of you could be getting a marriage license a driver's license a college degree citizenship a green card all those things are ninth house issues the ninth house also rules over the justice system it rules over judges so if you've had an ongoing case a difficult case that you thought you had a slim chance of winning you could get a surprise judgment simply because there is a favorable aspect at this lunation jupiter the ruler of judges the ruler of this lunation is looking away he's not aspecting this lunation some of you could benefit from divine intervention your ruling planet Mars is not aspecting this lunation, and this is because he's currently transiting your sign at around seven, at around 17 degrees. Mars just recently conjuncted the North Node, so perhaps you were feeling energized and wanting to take action, and perhaps you were even being a bit aggressive. In a few days, Mars is going to conjunct the eclipse degree and reactivate the Aries total solar eclipse. So perhaps at this time, you're busy dealing with things that are going on in your own house, and and the other things that are happening as a result of this lunation are, are not so important be because you're not receiving any challenging aspects to your sign this lunation could absolutely change the direction of your life it's going to change your future taurus ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your eighth house this is where you're going to experience endings you, this is where you're going to experience endings and culminations and we all know whenever we end things something new has to start the eighth house is a hidden house this is the house where we hide our secrets and sometimes even the secrets that we hide from ourselves this is a deep psychological house so it rules over hidden issues it rules over death sex and taxes this is uh, this is the house of other people's money and earned money and earned money like mortgages, inheritances, financial windfalls, loans, anything that you didn't work for, financial resources that are provided to you by others. This is also the house of deep bonding, deep intimacy, deep sexual intimacy. So if you're married and you're going through a divorce, this could be the culmination point. Your divorce is finalized and you're separating, and you're separating your resources. Others who are not married but are in a long-term relationship, this could be this could also be the end of that relationship and for others who have been dating casually they could end the casual part of the relationship and decided to take it to an, another level moving together and start sharing resources so so the dating phase of the relationship ends if you own a house and you've been diligently diligently paying your mortgage this could be the the culmination and ending could be you pay off your house in full and you no longer have a loan or it could be a car loan that you pay off in full or it could be taxes or it could be back taxes that you pay off at this time if you have relatives that have been ill for a long time unfortunately some of them could be transitioning at this time and as a result of them transitioning you get an inheritance this will put an ending to your previous life now you have extra money to now you have extra money to fulfill certain things your ruling planet venus is not aspecting this lunation directly however venus is however venus is exactly conjunct jupiter at the time of this lunation and jupiter is the ruler of the lunation you two are the benefics of the zodiac so you're cooking up something here and this something could have to do with other people's money perhaps big money because remember jupiter is going to eventually trine pluto when he moves into the sign of gemini hopefully you're not going to have the negative experience of this conjunction as it is happening conjunct the malefic fixed stars algo and the seven weeping sisters because your ruling planet venus is there and is a part of this conjunction and you are going to protect your own house taurus if you've not watched the beginning of this video i suggest you go back and listen to the whole introduction because i speak a little bit further about this 
because I speak a little bit further about this conjunction. This conjunction is really about you. So some of you might be overwhelmed by this conjunction since it's happening in your sign. And you might not be really dealing with the things that are going to happen as a result of this lunation. Taurus, this transit could absolutely change your life. There's so many transits that are happening in your chart that are life-changing. So your sign could really benefit from a personal reading with me. So book me at rachel-mayo.com. Gemini, Ascendant, Sun, or Moon. This lunation is happening in your seventh house. This is where you have massive endings and culminations. And we all know whenever you end something, something has to start anew. The seventh house is an angle house, and when an angle house is activated, it activates all the other angles in your chart. This means that all the areas in your life will be absolutely affected by this lunation. The seventh house rules over our significant partners, our, signif our significant relationships, our significant partners, business partners, marriages. It also rules over our open enemies. We all know that sometimes marriages lead to divorce, therefore making your partner an open enemy. And being that this is a full moon, it means that business partnerships could be ending, marriages could be ending, there could be divorces initiated as a result of this lunation. Uh, on the other hand, it could also mean that your divorce proceedings are finalized and the judge has made a decision. And perhaps because of all the other positive aspects happening at this time, you could be getting a favorable judgment. On a positive note, if you've been single for a long time, this could be the end of your single status. You could meet somebody you could meet somebody special as a result of the other as a result of the other aspects happening at the time of this lunation. If you've not listened to the introduction of this video, I suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction because there are some really special transits that are, other, that, that, that are happening independently at the time of this lunation and you could really benefit from those. Could be, this could be the magic spot from you. This could be where you really benefit. Jupiter is kind of involved here because he's completing his transit in the sign of Taurus and he's about to enter your sign in just about two days after this lunation. So if a relationship ends, just let it go because Jupiter is entering into your sign and he's bringing blessings and healing and he's bringing blessings and healing for you. This is a once in 12 year transit. So it's something to really look forward to. And you're also going to have the new Venus star point in your sign at around 14 at around 14 29 degrees of gemini this is also another magical transit which is also going to be happening in your sign so gemini whatever is happening at the time of this lunation if it's negative just let it go and trust that there's a bright light at the end of the tunnel the, your ruling planet mercury is also not aspecting this lunation it is currently transiting the sign of taurus and ending generational karma you're probably tired you're exhausted because you've been going around the zodiac you're in your 12th house of the zodiac and about to enter into your sign in a couple of weeks so you're dealing with other issues at this time you're not looking you're not looking at what's going on in your own house you're going to catch up you're going to catch up with jupiter later on jupiter is a bit too far away from you in the sign of taurus he's, he, because he's at the last degree and you're in the middle of the sign so you're not really having a conversation but later on at the venus star point you're going to get together with Jupiter and give him instructions on how you want him to operate in your sign. You and Jupiter are busy working on something behind the scenes in the sign of Taurus. You're going to deliver this news at the Venus star point when you're going to be exactly conjunct Jupiter. Gemini, if you're not subscribed to my channel, you're going to want to hit subscribe. You're going to want to hit subscribe right now and turn on the bell notification so that you may be notified whenever I upload the next video. This is going to be really epic for you. You're getting a couple of life-changing transits over the next couple of weeks. Cancer Ascendant Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in your sixth house. This is where you're going to have culminations, endings, and perhaps some bright new beginnings. Because we all know whenever you end something, you have to start something new. The sixth house is a difficult house because this is the house where we have to, because this is where we have to fight. It's like a margin house. We have to apply some, 
we have to apply some type of effort in order to make things work for us in this house and this is because it rules over our daily routine our diet our health it rules the work that we do it rules over our co-workers it also rules over our health this house also rules over lawyers because when we experience difficult situations at our work in our work environment we usually need the help of a lawyer so if some of you had an ongoing lawsuit against your company against your company this is the time that this lawsuit is possibly going to be con is this is the time that this lawsuit is going to be concluded and it could be possibly concluded in your favor the sixth house also rules over our pets we have to take care of our pets on a daily basis as well this is a full moon, it's a culmination, it's an ending. So if your pet is older or your pet has been ill, this could be the time that your pet transitions, unfortunately. And if you're one of those people who has been sick, you've been on medication, you've been taking some type of treatment, this is the time that you could be finishing that finishing that medication, completing the treatment, and seeing the good results of your treatment. If you've been exercising, you've been dieting, this is the time that you're going to start seeing the results of all your hard work. A ruling planet the moon is always part of any lunation so this means that you always feel any type of lunation personally if the moon in Sagittarius is being aspected by a favorable aspect a trying aspect to your ruling planet is very positive this means that you're feeling good you're feeling confident and empowered and ready to take on whatever this new moon whatever this full moon is going to bring your way and things could happen rather easily and effortlessly for you as a result of this positive trying. The sign of cancer is not directly aspecting this lunation. So we have to look elsewhere to see what else is important. And this is why I always tell people, listen to the introduction of this video. Because if you're not aspecting a particular astrological event, there could be some other transit that is happening at the same time of that event that is really affecting your sign in a really positive or perhaps even negative way. So if you haven't listened to the introduction of this video, I suggest that you go and listen to the whole introduction because the grace and the sweetness and the, because the grace and the sweetness that you're going to experience at the time of this lunation is going to come about because of the Venus Jupiter because of the Venus Jupiter conjunction which your sign is going to sextile so this means that you're going to be provided with positive opportunities chances to make things happen in your sign and in your Taurus house this is where the positive energy the good vibes are for you cancer so if you'd like to know how this is going to affect you according to your own placement according to your own placement i suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com leo ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your fifth house this is where you're going to have endings and culminations and possibly some new beginnings because we all know whenever there's endings there has to be some type of a new beginning lucky for you the fifth house is a lucky house so this is going to be a really positive so this is going to be a really positive lunation for you leo and you're a fire sign so this means that your sign is going to trine this lunation a trine aspect is the best aspect in astrology it's going to make certain things happen for you effortlessly they're just going to fall in place the fifth house rules over our creativity our creative ability and our greatest creation are our children so something could be going on with your children you perhaps you've been working on a project with one of your children and it comes to an end and if you are pregnant this could be the day that you deliver most people tend to deliver around full moon so be prepared for anything the fifth house also rules over romance vacations entertainment so if you've been away on a vacation this could be the time that you're ending that vacation and going back home to your children and going back home to your children and if you've been involved in a romantic affair that has not been really going the way you want it to go this could be the time that things come to a head and the relationship ends but with jupiter present this this ending could possibly be an amicable end an amicable ending to your relationship you saw this coming and you wanted this on the other hand if you've been trying to get pregnant and it's been a struggle this full moon could be the ending of your struggle you could you could surprisingly become pregnant and for others of you who've been working on a project for a long time perhaps it's a piece of art or uh, or or perhaps it's a song that you've been writing or a script and to finish working on that project and debut it to the world and others of you who already have your own business but it's not been working out you've not been making a profit 
this could be the end this could be the end of you not making a profit this could be the beginning of you finally starting to see some rewards of all the work the hard work that you put into your business and for some of you this might be a point where you just decide to just end to, to just close your business and start working on something else and start working on something else the fifth house also rules over good luck and this full moon in Sagittarius is a lucky full moon it's an optimistic one it's a good news moon so this could essentially mean that your good luck that you earned in a past life that you earned in a past life is is now activated in this lifetime as a result of this lunation so some of you could experience some really really lucky moments at the uh, around the time of this lunation the ruling planet is always part of any lunation so you tend to feel all lunations personally you are the sun the sun is having a really positive aspect to pluto who is currently in the sign of aquarius the trine aspect is an aspect that makes things happen effortlessly the best aspect in astrology this is really empowering so if you've been working with something so if you've been working on something with your partner because pluto is currently transiting your partnership area something is going to come to a culmination in that area and it's going to empower you however this full moon comes with a caveat the caveat here is the venus jupiter conjunction on the malefic fixed stars algo and the seven weeping si and the algo and the pleiades if you have not listened to the beginning i suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction because your sign is going to square this conjunction this could be the annoying fly at the time of this lunation and if you'd like to know how this is going to affect you personally i suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com there's so many positive things that could come as a result of this lunation virgo ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your fourth house this is where you'll have culminations endings and perhaps some and perhaps some new beginnings because whenever we end something something new has to start the fourth house is an angle house and whenever an angle house is activated it means that all the other angles in your in your chart are also activated so this lunation could absolutely change every area of your life the fourth house is another house where things come to end it is the house of endings the fourth house rules over our home our family our mother it is a parental axis it's definitely going to involve one of your parents if they're both alive and it could be it could be your fa it could be your mother or your father depending on which one was the more nurturing parent if one of your parents has been ill this is probably the time that their suffering will come to an end and they transition to the other side at this time and for others this full moon is going to bring a realization that you have a realization that you have to move from that you have to move from your home on the positive note others of you could be having a positive moment in that you finally end living in an old house and you move to a brand new home where you're eventually going to be happier the fourth house also rules over our ancestry our deep hidden emotions our deep resentments that could be towards our ancestry our family or our mother all these negative feelings are going to be brought up to the surface they're going to trigger something in you this might be the time that you decide to get rid of these negative emotions these resentments you may decide to go and seek therapy and if you have some secrets in your family or in your ancestry perhaps you were adopted or some other dark secrets this lunation is going to bring everything to the surface it's going it's going to shine a light on the secrets and maybe and, and maybe some endings will have to occur as a result of what secrets are revealed some of you who have been living in a foreign country this could be the end of you living there you are now deciding to travel back to your homeland the sign squares the sign of sagittarius and gemini so this means that you're squaring both luminaries this lunation is going to bring some challenges it's because the square aspect is a challenging aspect that pushes us into taking action and sometimes this is exactly what we need in order for us to take action the action that could possibly bring positive results down the line your ruling planet mercury is not aspecting this lunation is still trying the sign of Taurus unfortunately for you the sweet spot is with what's going on in the sign of Taurus so Virgo if you've not listened to the introduction of this video I suggest that you go and listen to the whole introduction because the sweet spot for earth signs is going to happen as a result of the Venus Jupiter conjunction that is unfortunately happening conjunct 
conjunct negative fixed stars however virgo is an earth sign so you are trying this aspect this is where the sweet spot is for your sign you, you might have a bad news good news type of situation the bad news just might require you to make some tough decisions and those decisions might eventually pay off into something good later on because you have really positive energy in the Taurus sign in the Taurus house of your zodiac as you can see it's not easy for me to tell to tell you what could happen what could possibly happen because I don't know what because I don't know what your placements are in your sign you could have so much positivity going on in the earth signs that the, that this lunation doesn't affect you so if you'd like to know how this is going to affect you personally I suggest you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com Libra ascendant Sun or moon this full moon is happening in your third house. This is where you'll have endings and culminations. And we all know whenever we have endings, something new has to begin. The third house rules over your immediate environment, your siblings, your neighbors, your neighborhood. It also rules over the, it also rules over the gadgets that we use on a daily basis to make our lives easier. And that could be your phone, your computer, your vehicle to drive around the neighborhood or back and forth to work. The third house also rules over the mind, our thoughts, our mental health, our speech. This is a Martian house. We have to apply effort to make things happen in this house. And this applies because Libra sextiles the sign of Sagittarius. This is harmonious energy that is going to bring opportunities your way. But with the sextile aspect, we have to do something. We have to make an effort to take advantage of the opportunities. Otherwise, this energy just dissipates. So be on the lookout for opportunities and those opportunities could come from your neighborhood or your siblings, your immediate environment. The third house also rules over our basic education, learning skills, especially the skills that we use with our hands and also writing. So some of you may have been writing a book. This is a time that you could be finishing up this writing and getting and you're now getting ready to publish it. And since the third house also rules over thinking our mind, if some of you have been having mental problems, mental issues, this is the time that those mental issues could come to an end if it was a minor issue. If it was something bigger, this could be the time that perhaps you're seeing results. Perhaps you're seeing, perhaps you're seeing results from a medication that you've been taking. If you've been having an ongoing conflict with your neighbor or your sibling, this could be the time that everything comes to a head and some decisions have to be made, some negotiations or compromises have to be made at this time. Or perhaps just simply agreeing to disagree and going your separate ways. If you, so if you have endings at this time, they're going to be amicable endings. Everybody's going to walk away feeling that they got something, that they got something out of this ending. So essentially it could mean that this could be a positive ending. The third house rules over our immediate environment. If you're tired of your immediate environment, your neighborhood, you've been wanting to move. This is the time that you're going to make this. This is the time that you're going to make the decision to move away from this neighborhood. So you'll be ending a stay in one neighborhood and beginning a new life in another neighborhood. Your ruling planet Venus is not aspecting this lunation. However, Venus is part of a really big conjunction at the end of the sign of Taurus. And this conjunction is really big because Venus is conjunct Jupiter and they're both at the degree of the malefic fixed stars Algo and the Pleiades. Libra if you've not watched the introduction of this video I suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction because if things are falling apart in your third house perhaps other things could be coming along could be coming along positively in your Taurus house and perhaps this conjunction is aspecting something else in your water and your earth signs so this could mean that things could be falling apart and ending in your third house but other things are coming together in your earth and water signs and the only way you're going to find out how this is really working out for you is by getting a personal reading so book me at rachel-mayo.com Scorpio ascendant sun or moon this lunation is happening in your second house this is where you'll have culminations and endings and we all know that whenever you end something something new has to start the second house rules over our self-worth it rules over our earning ability if you're earning a good living you're feeling good about yourself you have a higher self-esteem if that's not you then you have a lower self-esteem and you're possibly looking for opportunities to earn a better living so if some of you have been unemployed 
and you're looking for work, this could be the time that you find work. And for others of you who've been wanting to start your own business, you've been working quietly behind the scenes or something, and this could be the time that you debut your business and introduce it to the world, ending your status of being unemployed. The second house also rules over our family, the family that we choose, not the family that you're born into. This is the family that you make with another person because you got married and you decided to have children. All your friends that have been in your life for a very long time, that you look at them as family. So if you had issues in any of these areas, things are going to come to a head and there'll be an ending. The second house also rules over the mouth. It rules what you say, it rules what comes, what goes in the mouth and what comes out of the mouth. So if you've been on a diet, you change your eating habits, this is this could be the time that you're seeing the positive results of all your hard work. The second house is a Venusian house. It rules what we love and value. It also rules over the face. So if you've been having a, some type of treatment going on with your face, or perhaps you did some type of surgery, this is the time that you are now healing and seeing the beautiful results of your surgery. Scorpio, if you've not listened to the introduction of this video, I suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction because because the other sweet spots that are happening at the time of this lunation that have absolutely nothing to do with this lunation because they're happening in your Taurus house, your house of partnerships. So your partners are highly, so your partners are highly empowered at this time because they're having a Venus Jupiter conjunction. This conjunction is happening in your seventh house. So this might be the sweet spot for you. Your ruling planet Mars is not aspecting this lunation because he's currently transiting the sign of Aries, his own sign. So he's empowered because he's in own sign and you're feeling the power there in your, you're feeling the power there in your sixth house. And remember that Mars had also conjuncted the North Node. There was massive energy, empowerment, perhaps even aggression released at that conjunction. And he's heading towards the degree of his, uh, the degree of the Aries total solar eclipse. So he's going to reactivate that eclipse. So perhaps Scorpio is too busy taking care of what's going on in the sixth house. And if you want to know more about the solar eclipse in Aries, go back and listen to my video on that total solar eclipse because that, that eclipse is going to be reactivated by Mars and he is the ruler of the eclipse and he rules you. Scorpio rising, this might be a really positive lunation for you simply because both your ruling planets are activated. Pluto is highly activated at the time of this lunation. He's, make, he's making the most exact aspect to this lunation, a trine and a sextile aspect, both very harmonious. This means that you're going to get opportunities to advance yourself in the houses that are involved and you're also going to have and you're also going to have other things just fall into place as a result of the trine aspect pluto is the how pluto is a sign that rules over power so you're going to be feeling highly empowered at this time your other ruling planet mars is also busy as i said earlier in the sign of aries scorpio if you've not listened to the introduction of this video i suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction because there's some really sweet spots going on with your partners and if you have any other placement in the earth signs, these these placements are going to have a trine aspect and you are one of the lucky signs that could have something really magical happen with a partner perhaps this is the time that you're ending your single status and getting married or if you're single this could be a, this is a window for you to meet your soulmate or somebody who's going to stay in your life for a very long time to come if you'd like to know how this lunation is going to aspect you according to your own placements, I suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com. Sagittarius Ascendant Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in your sign. This is a really, really big moment for you because the spotlight is on you. So Sagittarius, if this is your sun sign, it's going to affect your identity, your soul, how others see you. And if this is your ascendant, it's going to be personal. It's going to be about how others see you, how, how you want others to see you. And it's also going to be about your body. It's an intimate and personal transit. If it's your moon sign, it's going to be somewhat emotional because it's going to bring emotional endings. It might involve one of your parents. The moon rules over the fourth house and this is where we're most vulnerable. And the fourth house is a parental axis. So it could essentially involve one of your parents, most likely the more nurturing parent. The ascendant is the body. So it's going to affect you very personally. 
the, as the ascendant is an angle house and an angle house and when an angle house is activated it activates all the other angles in your chart so this means that this lunation could absolutely change your whole entire life so if you've been working on something behind the scenes in your 12 in your 12th house this is the time that you're going to debut it to the world this lunation will put the spotlight on you we're all going to know what you've been working on so if you've been on a diet you've been trying to improve your health or maybe just simply lose some weight this could be the time that you're seeing the results of all your hard work when an angle house is activated it activates the angle opposite you that's with the other and that's where the Sun is it also activates your home area and also activates your 10th house your work area so whatever it is that you are changing about your identity completing about yourself is going to be seen and known by others some of you could be changing your whole entire wardrobe Others of you could be changing your name or your sexual identification. Others of you could be completing a sex change or anything that has to do with changes of how you want to present yourself, how you want to be, how you want to be seen by the other. Your ruling planet Jupiter is not part of this lunation. He's involved with a conjunction with Venus at the 28th degree of Taurus, which is very close to the malefic fixed star, to the malefic fixed star Algo and the Pleiades. This could be a good news, bad news type of situation because I don't know how this conjunction is aspecting your own your, is aspecting your own natal birth chart. So if some unfortunate endings come as a result of this lunation in your sign, perhaps there could be some sweet spots happening as a result of the conjunction of you and Venus. You are Jupiter, so you have some say as you have some say and control as to what is going to go on in this area. We have to look at the other houses in your chart. Your earth, your earth houses, and your water houses, because this is where the this is where the harmonious sextile and trine is going to come to this conjunction. Your ruling planet is completing his transit in the sign of Taurus. It is going to be entering the sign of Gemini in about two days. So if you haven't watched my video on Jupiter into Gemini, I suggest that you go and watch this video. It's the previous video. It's really important because this is your ruler going into a different sign. Your opposite sign so a lot of events are going to transpire when you enter into the house of Gemini and the ruler of Gemini Mercury is not going to be in his own sign when you enter his house so you're going to have the freedom to do whatever you want for about two weeks before Mercury ingresses into his own sign Mercury is currently transiting in the same sign as you he's in Taurus although he's too far for you to feel the conjunction but later but the two of you are brewing something you're working on something that is going to become apparent when you conjunct at the new Gemini Venus star point on the 4th of on on the 4th of June so as you can see Sagittarius this is your event but there's a lot of other important things going on with you and Mercury so if you have some negative endings at this time just realize that you are Jupiter there is some light at the end of the tunnel you're going to be in a different environment where you can also bring healing to relationships your business partnerships and anything that you do with the other person Sagittarius if you've not listened to the introduction of this video I suggest that you go back and listen to the whole introduction this whole video is about you the whole introduction is about you the nine because you are the nine thousand you are the ruler of this lunation so you just can't listen to this little part about your ascendant or your moon sign or sun sign and think that you get the whole picture there's a whole lot more going on at the time of this lunation and if you'd like to know how it's going to affect you personally I suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com Capricorn ascendant Sun or moon this lunation is happening in your 12th house this is where you're going to have endings culminations and perhaps some new beginnings because whenever we end something something has to start anew the 12th house is however a hidden house so Whatever is going to be transparent, whatever is going to be ending at this time is going to be ending behind the scenes. Other people may not know about it. It might be deeply emotional for you and you might feel isolated because the 12th house is the place of isolation. It rules over dark places, dark hidden places. It rules over places that we can't see, far off places, foreign lands, <laughs> aliens. It also rules the spiritual world. It rules over generational karma. And this is karma that comes to you as a result of the family that you were born into so you didn't earn this karma you earned it from your you earned it from other generations in your family
and what's positive about this being highlighted is that you could decide to separate yourself from things that have been going on with your uh, with your past generations. Well, perhaps you'll be the first one who will decide to go to college because Jupiter does rule over the ninth house. And you may decide to go to college in a foreign land and you will be the first person to get a degree in your family. So you're ending that generational karma that way or, or some other type of generational karma. I don't know what's going on in your chart, so I cannot tell you what type of generation what what type of generational karma you've you you've inherited the 12th house rules over foreign lands you could be ending your stay in a foreign land you could be back you, you could be coming back home now the 12th house also rules over our hidden enemies and sometimes our hidden and sometimes our worst hidden enemy is ourself and this is through self sabotage perhaps having through illicit affairs illicit affair illicit affairs perhaps with a married man or somebody who's just not available or perhaps through bad habits like alcoholism doing drugs overeating all those things are going to be highlighted the two luminaries are putting a spotlight on this area even if you've not want even if you've not been wanting to see this area in your chart or accept what's going on in your chart because it's somewhat hidden the luminaries are lighting it up. You are going to become aware of your self-sabotaging habits. You are going to become aware of your hidden enemies. And that enemy could essentially be you, yourself, through major self-sabotage. So this could be the time that you decide to stop, to stop doing that and decide to get help, to get spiritual help or to go to rehab or counseling. Capricorn, I suggest that you go back and listen to the entire introduction of this video because Things could be falling apart in your 12th house area, but other things could be coming together in your Taurus house area as a result of the Jupiter-Venus conjunction that you are trining, Earth and Earth trine. So this is a harmonious aspect that can help other things fall into place. So if you want to know more about this conjunction and the uh, conjunction and the possibilities and the uh, degrees that are being highlighted, go and listen to the entire introduction you might not even feel this full moon because first of all it's more on the subconscious level it's in a hidden place and it's in a sign that is behind you it's, it's in a sign that is behind you so you don't aspect this sign so the magic and so the magic and the goodness might be going on in your earth and water signs saturn your ruling planet is not aspecting this lunation because he's currently transiting the sign of Pisces. This is another reason why you might not really feel this lunation, but feel what is going on in your fifth house in the Taurus area of your chart. So if you'd like to know how this lunation is going to affect you personally, I suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com. Aquarius, Ascendant, Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in the 11th house. This is the area where you're going to have endings, culminations, and perhaps some new beginnings. As we all know, whenever you end something, something else is going to start. The 11th house rules over the groups that we belong to, our friends, our elder siblings. It also rules over our benefactors. It rules over the internet. This is the house that rewards all the work that you did in the 10th house. So this essentially means that some of you could be receiving some type of recognition in the groups that you belong to among your peers. It could also be that you get a promotion or you get some type of financial windfall as a result of all the work that you did in the 10th house. This is a house of reward and gains. It's a house of our hopes, dreams, and wishes. Something could really come together for you at this time. So I feel that the endings that are going to happen for you, Aquarius, are more likely going to be endings that you've wanted to have, endings that you've wanted to happen, endings that are going to be positive, endings that are going to release you from something in order for you to start something anew. And this is because your sign is going to receive a very harmonious sextile to the sign of Sagittarius and a trine to the sign of Gemini. You're getting double positive aspects to this lunation, meaning that you're going to have some things just naturally fall 
into place effortlessly and you're going to have to uh, you're going to be presented with some opportunities to make things happen you're going to have to apply some effort here that's the sextile aspect these are really positive aspects to this lunation and let's not forget that you have pluto transiting your sign your ascendant empowering you on a higher level it, you, he's in changing your very being of how you present yourself to the world Pluto is having the most exact aspect to this lunation and that is a very positive trine aspect. You have the power to make massive changes with yourself, your ascendant, and with whatever your hopes, dreams, and wishes are. You're receiving the best aspect in astrology. This is an excellent time for you to transform yourself in the groups that you belong to. That get the recognition that you deserve. If a friendship has not been going well, this could be the time that things will come to a head and you're going to decide to end this relationship, end this friendship and move your separate ways. It will be a liberation of some sorts. Some of you are going to decide to exit certain organizations or social media platforms that you belong to. Perhaps they are no longer a fit for where you plan to go in the future. And if you've been working on a certain project and it's been difficult and you haven't seen any positive results, this might be the time that you see the results of your hard work and get the recognition that you deserve. Your ruling planet Uranus is not aspecting this lunation. So that is so, so you're not directly involved in this lunation. Saturn is also not aspecting this lunation. Aquarius, if you've not listened to the introduction of this video, I suggest that you go and listen to the whole introduction because there's other things going on in your Taurus house that could be bringing some challenges towards you because you square the sign of Taurus and if you have other placements in earth signs that could be aspecting what is going on in Taurus the Jupiter the Venus Jupiter conjunction this could be the sweet spot so things could be falling apart or things could be falling apart culminating in your 11th house and you're a bit panicked, you're empowered there, but you could be panicking or have anxiety as a result of the other things going on in the house that's in the Taurus house because you're squaring this spot. And this spot is a sensitive spot for you because this area rules the most vulnerable spot in your zodiac, your home. So something could be going on with your family, your home area that needs your attention at the time of this lunation. So Aquarius, if you'd like to find out how this is going to affect you according to your birth chart, I would suggest you book a reading with me at rachel-mayo.com. Pisces Ascendant Sun or Moon. This lunation is happening in your 10th house. This is where you'll experience culminations and endings. The 10th house is an angle house. So whenever an angle house is activated, it activates all the other angles in your chart. This this lunation could absolutely rock your world. It could change your entire life. And whatever happens in the 10th house is known by the public. This is the most public area of our chart. It is the MC, the Midheaven. The 10th house is also a parental axis. It rules over the father or the mother, depending on which one is the most dominant parent in your life. The 10th house rules over our bosses, the government, the work that we do. It rules over our status in society, our standing in society. What are we known for? What do we do? How do we make our, how do we make a living? So for some of you, this could be an ending in a job. If you've been underperforming, you could probably get, you will probably get let go or you will decide to quit your job and start your own business, your own venture. Another ending to your status could be that you are single and you go from single to being married or you go from being married to being divorced or being married to being widowed to being pregnant and starting a family or your partner is pregnant therefore you're no longer just going to be just single you you're going to be a person you're going to become a father or a mother if one of your parents has been sick for a long time this could be the time that they transition to the other side or if you're a politician and you've been running a campaign this could be the time that your campaign ends and you win you become president or you become you know you 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 win some other type of title or you get a promotion ending your previous job title bringing it to boss Pisces, this is going to be a rather challenging lunation for you simply because you square the sign of you square the sign of Sagittarius where the new moon is and you also square the sign of Gemini where the sun is. The square is a challenging aspect in astrology. It's going to push you into taking action. So you're probably going to have to make some really tough decisions at the time of this lunation or as a result of whatever culminates 
transpires uh, tra transpires as a result of the full moon in Sagittarius, which is going to be a very public ending. So Pisces, if you've not listened to the introduction of this video, I suggest that you go and listen to the entire introduction because you are going to have a challenging aspect with this lunation, but there are some other sweet spots that are happening as a result of the Venus Jupiter conjunction, which will affect your placements in your sign because you're going to sextile this conjunction. So even though things are falling apart in your public area, other things could be coming together in your Taurus house or in your other earth signs or the other water signs in your chart. If there was ever a time for you to get a personal reading, this is the time because the sweet spot at the time of this lunation is elsewhere. The ruling planet Jupiter is currently transiting the house of Taurus in conjunction with the host of the house, Venus. Venus rules the sign of Taurus. You two are the two benefics of the zodiacs. So the two of you are working up something really positive together. But keep in mind that this conjunction is happening conjunct the malefic star, Algo, and the, and the Pleiades. So there is a caveat to this conjunction. I cannot tell you how it's aspecting other things in your chart. This is aspecting your own sign in a very positive way. Neptune is also sextiling this conjunction. So your other ruling planet, Neptune, is also having a positive, is also bringing opportunities for advancement in these two houses, you're communicating with your other ruling planet, Jupiter. The sextile between Jupiter and Neptune is a magical and really positive aspect. It's an aspect of soulmates. So some of you could essentially meet something, someone really special. Someone really special at the time of this lunation. Even though other things are ending and falling apart, is this magical sweet spot and your two ruling planets are involved in this. This could be really positive, epic for you Pisces. You might not really pay attention with all the other things that are going on in your Sagittarius house, or perhaps you need those things to fall apart so that you can take advantage of the other opportunities that are going on at the time of this lunation. So Pisces, don't let these opportunities that are going to come forward pass you by because the sextile aspect is an aspect of effort. And being that these are your rulers, it means that you have to be proactive. You have to take action in order to make things happen and not let this really positive once in a lifetime energy dissipate. But Neptune is not going to come back into your sign in this lifetime. It takes a hundred and somewhat years to go around the zodiac. So you're, bring, you're being presented with certain really unique opportunities as a result of the Neptune transits and the sextile aspect it's making to the two benefics. This is really positive and magical. Listen to the introduction for more information and listen to the Jupiter in Gemini video because remember you are ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is changing signs going into the sign of Gemini with a new Gemini Venus star point and this is going to square your sign. You're going to want to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, ring the bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload that video. So if you want to know how this will affect you personally, I suggest that you book a reading with me at rachel-mayor.com.